Yes, we'll be recording this program and by God's grace, we'll try to send it to those that might not be able to hook up with this program. Um, we'll be calling on Professor Yoro to, in just, in just two minutes, briefly introduce himself personally, and then um, we'll move on to the program itself. Uh, for, the, for the information of the facilitators, we don't need slides, we don't need any projection, just talk to us. Of course, I'm going to give you a guide as to what we we'll talk about. We just want to hear from an expert on the field what social media, uh, social work is all about, what data processing is all about, what medical coding is all about. We've talked about this in WhatsApp class. We will want somebody to tell us more. Yes, thank you from Zimbabwe. I know we have students from Zimbabwe, Ghana, Uganda, South Africa, as many uh, countries as possible. So our facilitators will also make sure that um, their discussion address people from other parts of uh, Africa and other countries outside Africa. Okay, thank you. Over to you, uh, Professor Jero. I think you, uh, you have the floor to introduce yourself before other participants. Over to you, sir. Uh, hello, good evening, all. Good evening, sir. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, I've been asked to introduce social work to you. Um, First of all, the first important thing to note is that social work is a helping profession. As a helping profession, it is built on the use of knowledge and skills. The knowledge and skills that is derived from the social sciences and the environment. What does social work do? The knowledge and skills of the social sciences and the environment is used to prevent, remediate, and resolve social problems. So social workers use that knowledge to prevent, to remediate, and to resolve social problems that affect individuals, social groups, and communities, so as to enhance the quality of social functioning and to bring about social development generally. Uh, so social work aims at preventing, remediating, and resolving social problems so that it will enhance the social functioning of individuals and thus bring about social development. So who is a social worker? A social worker is someone who has the knowledge and skills of the social sciences and the environment and is registered to work towards preventing, remediating, remediating and resolving social problems. So once someone is registered, is licensed, then he has the right to practice the profession of social work. What is really the scope of that individual? The individual is involved in doing assessment, in doing diagnosis, treatment, and evaluation of cases of individuals, their interpersonal uh, uh, relationships, and the social problems that they are confronted with. So the social worker uses the knowledge and skills that he has gotten from the social sciences and the environment to resolve the problem confronting that individual, the social group, or the uh, society. Social work has uh, areas of uh, practice. Uh, in many countries, we have uh, uh, family clinics uh, where people go with their personal problems or familiar problems, and uh, they work together to resolve such problems. We also have uh, community development or community organization, 
it's an area of practice. We have um, uh, youth development, we have youth groups and social workers work with them to mold their moral behavior. We also have uh, child welfare offices um, in some places. They have orphanages, also have daycare centers. This is an area of caregiving that involves professional social work services. We also have hospitals where medical social welfare units exist, and they are there to take care of patients uh, to provide social work services in the hospital environment. In the judiciary, we have the courts and social workers work in the courts as probation officers. Uh, they uh, also work there and assist in assessing cases and uh, making reports to judges. We have prison or what in many countries is now known as correctional uh, social welfare offices. And uh, social workers work there to assist uh, individuals to modify their behavior in line with what is required by the law. Uh, in industrial uh, offices too, they have uh, industrial social welfare offices where social workers work. There are also rehabilitation centers where they work with persons with disabilities, persons who have abused drugs um, and uh, victims of human trafficking or destitutes, they work and assist in rehabilitating them. Uh, there are also refugees um, and uh, internally displaced persons, uh, wherever they are camped, social workers work with them to help them in their needs. Social workers also work with uh, older adults uh, to help them in meeting their needs. We also have social welfare offices in schools and uh, they work in welfare offices in the school to help resolve the social problems of the school environment. There are also institutions that provide social insurance, pensions, and uh, gratuity administration. Uh, social workers work in these areas to also provide services for those who are in need. We also have women and gender offices working to help women with their problems and needs. Uh, there are also uh, military and paramilitary units, and uh, they always have uh, uh, offices that provide social welfare services, and social workers are employed in those places to provide uh, uh, welfare services. Uh, each country uh, in Africa and worldwide uh, has a history of the development of uh, social work services in that country. Uh, with respect to Nigeria, the provision of professional social welfare services started with colonialism. Uh, when the colonialists came and uh, they were confronted with free slaves, 
um, they had to respond to it to get people to care for uh, children who were freed slaves. And from there, um, children who were found to have offended the law uh, were also provided services. And this extended to family counseling and uh, other areas of uh, professional service. So in, in a brief, uh, that is what uh, social work is all about. Uh, with respect to my brief, um, the director of this program has told you already of uh, what in academics, I started my academic career at the University of Jos and uh, moved over to Lafia. I've also uh, worked in other universities during sabbaticals, but presently I'm with the University of Mka at Mka in Boko in Nigeria. So thank you. I await further questions and interaction with you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Prof. In fact, uh, I, I just felt as if you should just continue, but I know we have time constraints on our side. We are going to squeeze in uh, the three facilitators giving us what they have within these three, two hours that we have. Mm. So far, so good, Prof. You've done justice to this program. Okay, if you have any question, please feel free to ask uh, Prof. I know a lot of people want to ask how they can come into the social work profession, how they can get licensed, how they can get um, a certificate of practice, and this time around, highlighting our partnership with um, the Nassau Benue State Chapter, and um, what are the benefits of being a social worker? And you've already enumerated places people can work as social workers, but would you advise anybody to go into the profession of social work? Is it lucrative? And things like that. So maybe I will also give you a room, Prof, to talk about these areas. Thank you, sir. Yes, um, social work is a lucrative service, uh, just as it is common with other helping professions like medicine, um, nursing, and uh, all that. So social work is lucrative, uh, but I can say so where one, there is a central controlling unit uh, that is responsible for registration and licensing of those who have received a certificate of qualification in social work. There are, are countries that uh, do not license, so uh, it is open for every person to come in and provide uh, service. Uh, but where it is controlled, properly controlled, then uh, it is lucrative because it is only those who have certificate of qualification, they have presented themselves, they have been registered and given a license to practice. Uh, where that happens, uh, the, the, the work there, the service there uh, is really uh, lucrative and uh, people get money. Uh, for the service uh, they provide. Uh, how can one come in? Uh, in Nigeria and many countries in Africa, there are educational institutions uh, that offer training and certification in social work. So you just uh, Google and you can get some of these institutions that are accredited for offering training, K 
to social workers. There are various levels at which uh, one could come in. Uh, if you have not passed through an uh, educational institution, uh, you don't have any certificate, certificate at all. Uh, you can receive training in uh, auxiliary caregiving. Uh, if you uh, are an educated person, but it is difficult for you to get an accredited institution near you where you can uh, receive that training. Uh, you can also have access to auxiliary uh, type of training in social work and receive uh, certification. Uh, there are institutions that offer undergraduate diploma programs. Uh, usually two, two years, um, and at the end of it, the person gets uh, a certificate. In some countries, that is done in polytechnics or training centers uh, owned by government where uh, the diploma certification is uh, offered. Then there are undergraduate programs in uh, social work. Uh, many universities are offering that uh, in Africa, uh, in Nigeria, uh, in Ghana, in South Africa, in Tanzania, in Zimbabwe, and the several other countries. Uh, there are universities that are offering training at the baccalaureate level in uh, social work and uh, people go there and uh, get training, uh, get certification, and then they present themselves to the central controlling body so that they are registered and licensed to uh, practice the profession of social work. Uh, presently, uh, there are no institutions that are offering this online uh, degree programs in, in social work. Uh, there are some that partially they offer this long distance training and uh, part of it is offered online, but uh, there's a period that you are physical, uh, physically required to uh, visit the institution, uh, receive face-to-face uh, -face, uh, contact training, and uh, uh, before you are examined and uh, awarded a certificate of uh, uh, qualification in social work. Um, for those that received uh, degrees in uh, uh, other fields of endeavor and uh, who want to move over to social work. They can go for a postgraduate diploma in uh, social work that is offered in many institutions in Africa. Many universities are offering that so they can uh, uh, go to such institutions and receive a postgraduate diploma in social work. It's usually for one year. Uh, for the degree program, it's usually four years or five year, uh, one year with one year internship, that's five years. Uh, but for those who are coming from other disciplines into social work, it's just uh, uh, one year. Uh, training, and in each of these programs, there is internship, or what is known as a feed uh, practicum. We then have uh, the next level is the master's program in uh, social work. Uh, 
um, those that have done their first degrees in, in social work, they go for their masters. Uh, those that have come from other fields after receiving their postgraduate diploma, they then go in for a master's program in uh, social work. Uh, it's usually uh, have a minimum of three semesters. Um, uh, two semesters for the coursework, and then uh, one semester for uh, field practicum or internship, after which the person receives a, a certificate or qualification at the master's level. We also have a uh, uh, PhD, the Doctor of Philosophy in uh, Social Work, which uh, many uh, universities in Africa are offering now. Uh, those, uh, uh, that qualification is for those that intend to pursue uh, academic service, to teach and to research uh, in social work. Uh, the training is usually for six semesters, six semesters. And uh, it also involved uh, a period of field practicum or internship. So um, briefly, these are the levels of uh, training available in the field of social work. Uh, after each training and certification, the person can then present himself or herself for registration and licensing by the central controlling body for the social work profession. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Prof. Uh, it was a delight listening to you and to know that uh, we are on the right track. Yes, I also want to let everybody know that um, we are currently um, affiliated to Nassau Benese chapter, Nigeria Association of Social Work, or Social Worker, sorry, Benese chapter. And that um, by virtue of this training, you can become members of NASO. Uh, we'll, that will be spelled out to you uh, uh, in due course, maybe in the next two, three days after you've gotten your certificate. Details will be sent to you by email for those of you that want to join NASO Benefit chapter. And um, this certificate also qualifies you to participate in the auxiliary program that will be coming up soon. So for most of you that want to become social workers and you are wondering how, where to start, you now have an opportunity. You had Prof mentioning auxiliary social work. You can just go in straight like that. You must have some level of background. So this certificate gives you the opportunity to also join the auxiliary social work program. So um, you're on track. I want to appreciate Prof. We'll just take um, the five questions, we five hands we have here. Anthony Ujagbe, Mubara Kalidu, Ogu, Agumbi Ade, Fatima Adekoya, Taiwo. There may be, okay, Nohu Ibrahim. But at least your question should just be in seconds, just 30 seconds. And hopefully, Prof will also respond in just uh, one minute or two minutes so that we can squeeze out time for the other two facilitators. Over to you, Anthony Ujagbe. Straight to the point, please. Promote yourself. Oh, sorry. I didn't know that I was still raising my hand. The question I wanted to ask, I think you have been able to elaborate more on that. Excellent. So I want to say thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Okay. Um, Mubarak Halidu. Uh, good evening, sir. Have we answered your question? Uh, no, I, I think I still have something that I want to be cleared on. Okay. Yes, uh, my question is, please, is it possible for someone not on a medical field to still go into the social work practice? Yes, without asking Prof to answer that, I can just say yes from here. Uh, you don't need to be a medical doctor or have a medical background to go into social work. And that's why courses like this, uh, the, one of the things you need to also understand about Laplace and what we do is that 
we create room for people to be able to migrate from a particular profession to the other. We create opportunities for people. And that's why, ordinarily, you might not even know that you can become a social worker. But with a course like this, it gives you an opportunity to know, wow, I have a certificate in social work. I have knowledge in social work. I can even do an auxiliary. I can even progress and gradually yeah. start climbing the ladder. So, um, yes, of course, why not? Even mental health, you don't need to have a medical background. Mental health, caregivers program. Yes, we have programs like that to that helps you to come into the system. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Adekoya. Taiwo. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes. Uh, my question is based on uh focus after BSc degree that as a social work student after graduating as a social worker can one venture into psychology or sociology in master degree well uh we well we are battling well, with time we are battling with well, time here and I will not want us to go into a discussion that is not really part of what we are doing. What our advice to do is that you can you can just go 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 to Google and type that query, and I can bet you you get an excellent answer to your question, so that we we'll just uh, save our time. Are you with me, Adekoya? I'm with you, sir. Okay, I've responded to you already. Okay, thank you. Please, uh, before I pick the other two, the last caller, I mean, person that's going to ask a question, uh, we have simple rules here, and it applies to every Zoom program worldwide, anywhere. You don't join our Zoom program and you are not properly dressed. Yes. You don't join our Zoom program and you are eating while on this program. It's just like you're in a classroom, facing prof and you are chewing or eating a bar or swallowing or drinking your mineral or whatever. It's not allowed. Yes, yes, it's virtual, but the same decorum persists. You are not supposed to be on our program or any Zoom program and be lying down. Yes, you are not supposed to do that. So uh, we apply the same rules here. So if you know you have that issue, you please do the writing or your video will be switched off, or you might even be exited. Okay, let's move ahead. Nuhu Ibrahim, just 30 seconds, please, for your question. Good evening. Yes, evening. Yes, um, uh, my question is, uh, I was just imagining, if not uh, for what the main prof just mentioned concerning uh, the, you know, the scope of duty of social workers. I yeah. wouldn't have known that they are the one responsible for those who are taking care of uh, drug ab abusers. Mm -hmm. Sir, in Nigeria, is this a I mean, program, is it recognized among ordinary people? Because I see people only rely on uh, nurses, doctors, Red Cross, and some other sister body who give social services. Is this a, is it recognized among ordinary Nigeria? Is there awareness about what a social service provider gives to ordinary, you know, common citizens in Nigeria and in Africa? Thank you very much. Yes, before Prof responds to that, I want to quickly say that um, one of the reasons why social media is important is that it spreads information quite quickly. And there are a lot of things happening in this country and other parts of the world that people are not aware of. And just like you said, thanks to this program, you are now aware of what social, where social workers work and what they do. Yes, yeah, someone might be a Red Cross, but still be a social worker. Someone might be a policeman and be a social worker. You can be a lawyer, I don't stop you being a social worker. So um, like what Prof just said, you, you, social workers are virtually found in every aspect of life. Uh, but let me just hand over to Prof to, uh, to finish in touch with that class. Over to you, Prof. Yes, uh, thank you very much. You have uh, answered the whole question. Uh, what I will do is just add some examples. He talked about psychiatric uh, services. We have the Arrow Mental Hospital. Uh, 
in the uh, Southwest. And uh, we have professional social workers there who are providing uh, services. Up in the North, uh, we have uh, the uh, psychiatric hospital uh, in Kaduna. And uh, there are professional social workers working there. Some have PhDs. Uh, and they are providing the service. Uh, so as um, the director has mentioned, we have social workers in visually all the fields of endeavor. And uh, there are social welfare offices there where they work and they provide uh, social work services. So you are welcome. Okay, thank you very much, doctor. Uh, um, Prof, sorry. Uh, thank you very much. I want to quickly acknowledge the fact that we have people from Bangladesh, uh, Liberia, South Africa, Ethiopia, Uganda, Ghana. Yes, and um, they are all just there. I'll keep mentioning them as they come up. Okay, we've uh, done justice to this topic, social work, and I want to inform you that uh, you are going to find yourself in a group where you can always have interactions. And for those of you that will be doing uh, auxiliary social work, caregiving, uh, you will be meeting Prof very often. He will guide you, you'll be under his tutelage. And I can assure you that when you graduate, going through his tutelage, you can perform and hold your own high anyway in the world, you will come out the best. So just watch out for the program. We'll be announcing it soon. Check your emails, check your uh, text messages and WhatsApp. And above all, ensure you join our uh, alumni group on Telegram so that you can be getting information about programs like this. God bless you. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. We can uh, excuse you now so that you can have some rest. And um, if there's any other need, we will contact you privately. Thank you so much. Thank you too. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, that was a very wonderful session with Professor Joro. Uh, yes, he gave it all, and there's nothing else to add or to subtract. When an authority speaks, you know that authority has spoken. Okay, we'll move on to the next uh, speaker, and I hope it's, the person is is ready. Yes, uh, just give me one minute and let me be sure that he is uh, available. Okay, um, I want to believe that um, our next facilitator is ready. Uh, Mr. Peter Rindam, are you here? You can just uh, raise up your hand, let's see you. Because I can't find the name. Peter Rindam, just raise your hand, please. Or you can just send me a message on here. Just say hi to me, except yeah. Mr. Peter, are you here?
Yeah, Mr. Peter, if you can hear me, just um, just type yes or raise up your hand so that I, I can know because I can't find your name after searching. Is that Mr. Peter Abishak? Is that Mr. Peter Abishak? Yes, unmute yourself, please. Yes. No, sir. No, 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 no. Please, we've passed that. We want to make room for our facilitator. Please, after the program, it's time we can call you up. Or you can just type your question. Okay. Yes, I lost you. Yeah. I had to go out and then came back again. Just type your question. Your network is bad. I can't even hear what you're saying. Okay, please, if Mr. Peter is not here, we have to move on to the next uh, facilitator. Mr. Donald. Yes, okay, Mr. Donald, you are welcome to this program. Um, we are going to be having our level two. Um, with uh, Mr. Donald on data processing and I can show I, I can assure you that after your level two you will come out a different person and it's going to be very affordable too yeah very very affordable so um he's going to be talking to us about data processing we've done so much in class about data processing but you haven't talked about data processing for just 10 minutes and um, we have another 10 minutes for you to ask your question from five persons so that we can go around about data processing while preparing to do our level two. But this is an opportunity for you to hear from the horse's mouth and learn so much again. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Donald. Please introduce yourself briefly and tell us what data processing is all about. Are you there, Mr. Donald? All right, good evening, everyone. I want to be... I want to believe you can hear me. Yes, go ahead. I can hear you. All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I want to thank of Laplace Metaverse for this. Uh, it is very, very uncommon. And I just want to uh, the opportunity and then for everyone here present today, I welcome you. Data processing. Well, before I go, my name is McDonald Ehiwe. I am a professional data analyst. I studied mathematics and computer science. And four years of field working experience. Uh, consulting for brands and building data solutions across different sectors uh, and different industries. I want that data analysis and data processing is actually a virgin field as long and as far as Africa. Why? Because there is a great um, need for companies and firms to drive profits and multiply sales, minimize uh, costs and expenses. Of course, this is the goal of every organization. And I followed through on the uh, three days of data processing class. I watched all the videos. The two days of data processing class, I watched all the videos and read through all the topics. And I also want to say, please, if you have not uh, gone through all of those uh, topics and those course materials, I will advise you, if you really want to take um, data processing and data analysis as a core field, 
you need to go back to those materials and study. It is fully packed with information you need uh, at your fingertips. Now, why is data processing important? I know you've talked about that. Uh, that was actually dealt with in class. But I want to just let you understand the value you can get delving into analysis benefits you as an individual, as a business person, as a student, and wherever you find yourself. Then the next thing I'm going to address here is, is it for me? What if I am not a science student? Can I get into data processing? Is it a field I should look forward to? So I'm going to be hitting on those notes today, and then I'll give you opportunity for you to ask your questions. Top brands in the world today are seriously looking for ways to streamline their operation process, buying processes, uh, how to control user buying pattern. And nothing gives you confidence as an organization or as a business, then you know very well that for over a period of time, past, present, you've had customer base that patronize you for a certain service in a certain way. Are you able to keep track of those data? And then now what data processing does for you is that it gives you the opportunity to collect those data from customers, uh, prepare those data, transform those data, and then analyze the data to make informed decision. The goal of data analysis and data processing is to drive data-driven decision or make data-driven decisions, whether in your life or whether in your businesses or whether in your organization. Now, I... I met a particular client that wants to build a data model for his business. And he asked the question, we have lots of customers, but we realize that our revenue is being generated by few of our customers. We want to be able to know how much, to what extent um, these customers contribute to our revenue base, and we want to be able to provide special services for those people that give us over 60 to 70% of our revenue base. And I asked them the question, what do you have? What data do you have? And they gave me is an 18 month data. And after the analysis, they were able to improve their services because they have that information. Now, when you have data at your fingertips, you have power and you can decide a lot of things just from your data. You're a student. In this class, I believe we have students. I believe we have business owners. I believe we have uh, even clergymen. As a student, you can use data analysis and data processing uh, skill to earn revenue as a side hustle, as a freelancer. That means if you become very good in it and you practice as a data analyst or as a data processing uh, student, you can actually register in some of these freelance websites and get yourself uh, jobs to do alongside. Now, I also want to say this, that as a data processing student or a data analyst, the global scale of uh, remuneration as a data analyst, as an entry level data analyst, is between the ranges of 25 US dollars to 35 US dollars per hour. And you can get those remote jobs easily by registering on most of these websites. So if you are looking at uh, working remotely from home for companies abroad, then 
data processing is a skill that you should begin to take a look at. If you are in business, you have been doing business for how long? One year, two years, three years. What are you doing about the customers that are walking into your office and then going out? Do you realize that if you are not collecting the data in your business, analyzing the data in your business, transforming the data in your business, you are leaving over 90% of the revenue that you are currently making. Let's put it in perspective. If in your business, you, your monthly revenue is 100,000 Naira, but you have not taken, you don't have any data structure you are currently running your business on, that means you are not collecting data. You are just selling, going to market, buying and selling. And you make 100,000 Naira in revenue. Guess how much you are losing every month? You are losing 90,000 Naira in revenue that would have been added to the 100,000 to make 190,000 Naira that you would have been making. Just by simply ignoring the customer data that you have. Every business person, every business person, and I repeat, no matter the sector you are, whether you are in buying and selling, trading, or whether you are in uh, services, you are offering services, selling of product, whatever it is, there is a data uh, model for every businesses. And that's more reason why, if you are a data analyst or a data processing student, you have lots of options. Your, your opportunities are limitless because over 80% of the companies in Nigeria today do not have a data structure for their business. And they are looking for data analysts and data uh, engineers, data scientists that can help them collect this data and make meaning out of the data. I also understand we have clergymen, pastors, you run a church. Friends, every Sunday when you go to church, they ask for first timers. What do you do with the data you collect from first timers? Data analysts and data processing cut across every field. In short, it is the fifth most highly lucrative skill in the world today. You can Google it and see exactly what uh, I'm talking about. It is the fifth most highly lucrative skill in the world today. If you are in any of the field of data processing, data analyst, data scientist, data engineering, whatever field you find yourself in the data industry, you have lots of opportunities and options at your fingertips. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. So uh, we, we've been able to cover quite a lot in the course of the class. The level two uh, section of this class is coming up pretty soon. Um, uh, Mr. Saza is going to announce the date and procedure for the level two. And like he has said, it's going to be very, very much affordable. And it's fully practical. Everything that you have learned in the level one is theory. That's why I'm asking you to go back and read those theory. In the level two, it is fully practical back to back. You are going to learn how to collect data, what kind of data you are collecting, how to process those data, how to transform those data, how to manipulate those data, then how to visualize those data. And then in level, level three, you'll be learning how to create data models for business, data products, data solutions for business. And with your certificate, with Laplace certificate that you have, you can work anywhere 
in the world because you will not only have the certificate, but you will be well grounded as a data analyst and you can stay up anywhere and make good income for you and your family. So data analysis and data processing is a field I always en uh, encourage everyone to get involved with. Now, the last thing before I will entertain your question is, if you are new to data analysis and you keep asking yourself, is this something I can get involved in? Is this something I can do? I can tell you that previously I have taught people from social sciences, arts, completely arts, law, whatever it is, any field, with the way this, the lectures have been structured, you, you don't have to have any previous knowledge to become uh, a student of data processing and data analyst. Because we're going to take it from beginning, from the start, from the basis. So whether you are new or whether you are in science field or whether you are in art field, whatever, the class has been designed to accommodate you. So without uh, wasting much of our time, I'll just leave this last word. If you have a uh, hundred miles to go, you do not cry about how far you have to go. But what you decide is take the first step from that moment you realize that you have 100 miles to go and it becomes 99 miles cover the first mile and it becomes 99 miles and i also want to say this my last word the secret to success as a data analyst is practice you must practice and practice number two practice number three practice number four and practice number five without practice you cannot show yourself approved, not only in data science or data uh, processing, but also in every field. Thank you once again to Laplace Metaverse for the opportunity. And thanks to everyone who is currently here. I will entertain your question as they come. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. McDonald. You sorted it out as far as data science is concerned. And uh, we keep telling our students that um, you don't have any reason why you shouldn't be working either for yourself or for an organization. All you need to do is upgrade and develop yourself, invest in yourself, and you see yourself being uh, so valuable that people will look for you everywhere. All you just need to do is do what people need. Acquire that skill people need. Don't just rely on the skill or the education you had some years ago. And the work is moving and moving at a very fast speed on a daily basis. So for you to catch up with the world and what the world needs, you need to also upgrade. And what we just succeeded in doing here is just to ensure that you get the best training in the world, you get the best of materials, the best of facilitators, just for a fraction, just for something that you can actually afford. So, you achieving your dream is now very affordable. You don't need to pay in huge amount of dollars or naira. You can just afford it, and yet you can compete with the best in the world. I think we actually need a very big kudos from you for that. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll be taking some questions now, just five questions. Each question should be just 30 seconds. Please, straight to the point. And I also, we, uh, the, I hope the facilitator will also use 30 seconds or the most one minute to respond to each question so that we can move on to the next facilitator. Uh, Emmanuel Owazuike, are you bribing me? <laughs> or you are praying for me? <laughs> okay, let's start with you. So we have Emmanuel Owazuike. We have a Techno Camon 12. Next time I will not call you Techno Camon 12 because that is not a name. We have Eze Wulu Victor. We have Mubarak again, Mubarak Ali Du Olma. And now, before I take this question, please, I want to advise you. When you take a course with Laplace, yes, it's good to have your certificate, but also make sure you have that skill. 
you have that knowledge and back it up with a certificate. I can assure you that even in the White House, you should be able to work in the White House. That skill, if you have the certificate, no matter the level of certificate you have, if you don't have the knowledge, you don't have the skill, that certificate becomes worthless. But when you have the skill, you have the knowledge, as you are taught in the class, now you have the skill and you have the certificate. You are good to go anywhere in the world. Okay, so what to you, Wazwiki? 30 seconds, please, to ask a question. Yeah, good evening, all. Good evening. Thank you very much. My name is Mr. Emmanuel Uwezoke. Okay. okay. Uh, I'm also participated in data analysis of processing level one. And I believe God I moved to level two. So what I want to ask, what are the differences between data processing or analysis to data scientists and engineering? Thank you. Okay. So what are the differences? What between... are the differences between data processing, data yes. analyst, uh, data scientist, sorry, and data engineering? Because you mentioned it in the line of your teaching. Yeah. Okay. Um, for data, the key word data processing is a parent word. When you are processing data, everything within from end to end, that means from the research you do initially before you collect data to when you collect your data, when you uh, transform your data, analyze your data, visualize your data, and interpret your data. All of these uh, processes are data processing because you are processing your data from uh, beginning to from data into information. You're transforming the data into meaningful information. And then in the field of data analytics and data science, it's a wide, uh, it has wide sectors and different sectors. Engineering has engineering data analytics. Healthcare has healthcare data analytics. We have business data analytics. And it goes on and on for different industries and sectors, you have different uh, 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 rules of engagement and rules that guide their operations. So for data processing, everything you do within the bands of data collection, transformation, analysis, visualization, and data interpretation, all of it is data processing. You're processing your data. And then when you now come to data analyst and a data scientist, they are two very similar words, but they are different. Data scientist works on uh, predictive, predictive data analysis, while uh, data analyst works on prescriptive or statistical data analysis. So that's the difference. Data scientist works on large data sets, while data analysts work on uh, 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 pre, uh, pre edited data sets or small sets of uh, data compared to when a data scientist is actually working on its data. Okay. Does I that answer your question? I want to believe you've responded to him. Are you there? Uh, has it answered your question? Or mute yourself, please. Okay. Yes, you have answered the question. I'm, I'm okay. Very good. Thank you. Very much, Doctor. Um, is a is a Wulu Victor. You have only 30 seconds to in fact, let me make it 10 seconds to ask your question. Unmute yourself. <laughs> uh, good evening, sir. Ten good evening, sir. Yeah. Um my question goes like uh first uh, data processing level one, 
material. I haven't gone through it. I mean, but I was late or something. I didn't know where the platform, where they sent it or something. Second question is, um, as a statistics, as someone who studies uh, who has BSc in statistics, I don't know. I'm looking for what you advice are going to or what field do you advise are going to into the data world? You study statistics? Yes, sir. Okay. And you want to know what field you should be advised to go into? I think Hello, is that your question? Yes, sir. Exactly, sir. Okay. Um, uh, statistics is actually a fundamental in data processing or data analysis. If you have the knowledge of statistics, it becomes a building block for you to run data analysis and data processing. We have statistical data analysis, like as I said earlier, business data analysis, healthcare data analysis. However, because you are going to be doing dealing a lot with probability outcome in different case scenarios, because the way data analysts or data scientists work is that they give you all the data and then they ask you a question. You don't know what the answer is, but you are expected to use the data to answer the question. So if you have a basis in statistics, you can, you can find yourself as a data analyst, you can decide to delve into data science that's for advance. But if you must go into data science, you have to first of all, move from being an analyst into a data scientist. Because as a data scientist, you must be a data analyst in order for you to become a data scientist. Does that Thank answer you very your much, question? Sir. Yes, sir. I, actually, I was going, I'm learning and boy, it's, this is a very broad and very long term time. It's get, I get in the theory, I get confused and everything. So I was thinking if, if there is a, is a is I, I came to this data process and I haven't gotten the material yet. I don't know where I can get the material so I can at least. Okay. Um, uh, Victor, Mr. Victor, um, yes, I'm sir. going to private chat to a group, a WhatsApp group. Just join and you'll be sent the link to go and study. After which you can just do your test, get your certificate, because it's only we can only uh, be attending to those that have done the tests, gotten certificates to be qualified to go for level two. We don't want a situation where people will go for level two and uh, the facilitator will be having yeah, issues uh, flowing with them. So we want a steady flow. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. All right, I'm waiting for your chat, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Dr. Odo Joseph Obiora. But before Dr. Odo, sorry, Dr. Odo, hold on, hold on. Uh, somebody just asked a question. How can company verify certificate? Is, is there a link? Yeah. And very shortly, we'll be having a link that they don't need to inform us. They'll just go there, verify your certificate. That's going to be coming up soon, latest June. However, before now, what companies do is that they write us and ask to verify your certificate. All we need to do is go to our database and check. We'll not just say yes, because we saw it's our certificate with your name on it and whatever. No, we go back to our database and ensure that you actually did that course with us and you got the certificate from us. So we don't take chances with our certificates. So if you are applying for a job, you have to just email us and that's all. If you've done the course with us, we'll verify them. We have responded to several embassies that send messages. Uh, we're very private, we don't inform the candidates and we just check if they got, because people apply with our certificates to the embassies and the embassies want to know if they actually got it from us and we respond to them. Yeah, thank you. Okay, over to Dr. Odo. Thank you very much, sir. 
Yeah, Good evening. All right, my question is how many levels do we have to attend before we become a pro in this course? Okay, before, I, I, I will personally want to even respond to that before, if, then if Mr. Hayes has anything to add. Uh, no, let I'm me sorry, tell you. I still have a, um, the second one is that uh, I have not uh, done my own test. I don't know if there will be privilege for me to go through the material and run my test. Are you, are you, you not much. in any of the WhatsApp classes? I am, I am. So in that WhatsApp class- I joined uh, late. Talk to the facilitator that you want to take the test. And you also, okay. there's also a study material there. You can take the, take the study material to read. All right. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Uh, and becoming a pro. Just like Elia stated, knowledge, skill, and certificate goes hand in hand. Uh, it was before now, people keep saying, I have a certificate in this, I have a certificate in that. Nobody is interested in that. It is when you display knowledge, back it up with skill, then for documentation purposes, for posterity, and for so many reasons, for evidence purposes, they will tender your certificate and they will file it. Before anybody asks you to bring a certificate for filing, they must have asked you some questions, one or two questions. So that's why we keep telling you, you must build the knowledge. Now, you've done level one. At the level of level one, you can comfortably tell someone what data analysis is all about. You, may, you might not be able to process data. Now, if you go for level two, you should be able to start processing data. Yes, the next level will make you final. And let me tell you something. Even if you study up to level 20, just like the facilitator said, if you don't practice and you don't keep practicing, you will discover that you might need to do a refresher course after some time. So that practice, steady practice will help you. There are those that might not want to go up to level three, because of one reason or the other, time, finance, or whatever, but with their level two, they might be able to practice to the point where they become as good as somebody else in level three. It might just take a very long time or so. But for moving to level three gives you a shorter time to perfect your, your understanding of data analysis. So uh, it's not a case of yes or no. It's a case of commitment, a case of uh, showing enthusiasm for the course, and the study, knowing quite well that this course, if I do it and I know it and I practice it, because when you say you're a data analyst, the next question is that they want you to analyze the data. It's a practical course. So I just hope I've, I've made myself clear. And uh, over to Ms. Ayes, if you have anything to add to this. Okay, um, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Sazer. You've actually hit the nail on the head uh, no matter how how much you, how many levels you find yourself, it's all about practice. And this particular level designed in such a way that you are given real life business data of companies and you are asked to analyze those data to find out and deduce different problems being faced by the organization. So you are going to be using real life data. And by the end of level two, you will have over like five to 10 different use cases to build your profile. Because after you get your certificates from level two, you are expected to build your CV or your profile with proof of work that you have done. So those real life examples and real life case studies that are gonna be given to carry out as practice in the, in, the, in the time of your course or your study in level two, will now serve as your proof of work and experience in the field of data analysis and data processing. So there is no end to learning, practice, practice, practice. I'm very, very, very much emphatic about the word practice. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I want to respond to some questions here. As an accounting student, the practicing procurement administration, 
can I present this level one data processing course for upgrade? Well, um, it all depends on your organization. But if you can demonstrate sufficient display of knowledge on the course you've just taken, why not? I want to believe that your organization will be very happy to know that you now know about data analysis and that you can do one or two things on data analysis. Yes. And if they also understand that you intend to progress to level two, organizations respect such staff and they will be very happy because you are going to become an asset to them, to present it to them. And I want to believe every responsible organization will actually uh, appreciate such staff. Now, I have another question I want to quickly respond to here. Um, can someone without a background, okay, no? Yes, like we said, regardless of a background, it's an opportunity for you to come in. There's a particular question I want to respond to here. Uh, I hope the person has not deleted it, but let me see. Caregivers class is coming up soon, and uh, you can join any of these. Okay. Just a minute, let me just respond to that because uh, it was a serious issue. Okay, I want to believe the person has deleted that because it was not important. Anyway, what the person asked was that, um, how do you pay for certificate? Because she was told that she has been scammed or whatever. Yes, I, I don't think um, you even need to bring that issue up. Maybe that's why you deleted it because you can be on Zoom taking courses for the past three days or so. A course of what class repute, listen to a professor, and you'll be talking about being scammed. Anyway, in your class, when you want to pay for certificate, please, whoever taught you in that class for the past three days or two days, whoever gave you that link to join the whatever, should be able to give you an account number to pay into. Like I said, from June, you'll be having a central account number to pay into directly from our website. That is going to be done anytime soon. But I think if somebody has taught you in a class or some days, you shouldn't have a problem making payment into that person's account, especially if it's a corporate account. Thank you very much. Okay, um, I want to take just two more questions and we'll move on to the next facilitator. Anna, over to you. Just 30 seconds, Anna. Okay. Um, my name is Hannah. So okay. I was asking that, um, so in each of the levels, we're supposed to get a certificate, right? You said what? Yeah. So um, we are done with level one, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's the certificate you are rewarding. Yes. So we're supposed to do it in three levels. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, so um, so the seventy is it for the level one certificate or is it for um the the three courses that we did? It cannot be the three courses. You just paid for level one now, and like I said, level two, level three is optional. But I would strongly advise you do level two. Then you can now sit down, ask yourself, should I go ahead with level one and level three, or I should have bit is breathe a bit and work with it, or just hold on and do level three later. Have All I right, okay. okay, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you. So one more question, then um, we'll move ahead. Please um, send us an email, Oka for Prince, send us an email, Oh, you, you have the certificate already. Just type 
support at laplaceservices.net. Just type Laplace Services on your email search bar when you log into your email and the certificate will come up. You don't need to stress yourself about that. Okay, just one more question and then um, we'll be talking. Um, Joyce Lynn, what's your question, please? Is Joyce Lynn there? Okay. If you are not there, we'll move ahead to somebody else. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, please. You have 10 questions, just 10 seconds to ask a question, please. Yeah, I want to know if after after the certificate, can you use it to apply a job or any work at any field? You see, like when we just it's... answered this question several times. We said yes, oh, okay. you can apply for a job anywhere in the world. However, however, data processing is not um English language, like let me put it that way, or literature where you just taught, you are taught a literature and you know the story in a book and that's all. Even then, if you study literature, you might be called upon to just talk about a book you studied. So you must know about that book you said you studied. Not to talk about a, a course like data processing where you have to practically analyze data. A company will not employ you to analyze that data if you are given data and you cannot analyze it. So when you are okay. trying to get a job, Excellently, yes, you can present this anywhere in the world. We can assure you that. But the question is that, can you do the job? And that's what we keep okay. saying, your skill, your knowledge, and your certificate. Please, let's work on those three. This is one major issue areas we have issues in Nigeria. The last place I worked several years ago, I was interviewed, I was employed, I became a GM, managing 75 people in a fact massive factory. Until I left that company, nobody asked me for my certificate. If nobody even cared if I even went to university. Why? Because I was able to prove to them that I can deliver. At that okay. point, nobody cares to know, do you have a certificate? So, but at the level you are right now, get a certificate. It helps you to move to the next level, acquire proper skills, deeper skills, and keep practicing like the say, Keep practicing, expand, dig deeper. In fact, just tell yourself, I want to end up becoming a data analyst. And this is where I'm starting from. And that's all. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, one more question. Just one more. And that's the end. Abduli Minte. How much yourself, please? Abduli Minte. Are you there? Abdulay, are you there? Please go ahead. Yes. Okay, you are not there. So we have to uh, call it a day. We have to call it a day. For those of you that have been asking you, You have to do your level one. Uh, the payment for level one for your certificate is just 5,000 there. Make a payment to your class. Your pastor will process your certificate after you've taken a test and make sure you pass that test. Then um, um, okay. After you pass the test, for those of you that will pass the test and get a certificate, you will be sent a link to join for your level two. Yes, we don't want to announce the fee right now because um, I'm still talking to Mr. McDonald, who is going to handle you for that particular question. I'm, I'm appealing to him on your behalf to still see how he can work on the fee, but I want to believe that the fee is going to be so affordable that you will be happy to pay for it. Okay, uh, I've got an information here. Let me say this here. Valentine Onoche, this course is being brought to us at virtually no cost. I happen to have tried to apply to do PGD data, data science at the University of Texas for six months at a cost that is humongous. 
when compared to what we are getting here. Well, we said it earlier on that we want to ensure that every African have access to world-class education at a zero cost. And when you pay, it will be so that it will not be compared to the amount of value you're going to get after getting that knowledge and certificate. And that's what we are doing. And we intend to keep it that way. And that's why you see people rushing to Laplace Metaverse to take courses. The quality is there, and yet it's highly affordable, the most affordable in the world. OK, uh, thank you, Mr. Donald. I want to believe you've done justice to this uh, topic. For everybody that have listened to him, uh, you can be sure that when you are doing your level two, uh, you are going to get um, A to Z about data analysis. In fact, I'm going to be a student in that class too. So you can be sure to see me there in that class. So if I'm going to be in that class, you should know that um, uh, it's a serious matter. I'm, I also just left a class today uh, with uh, Nigeria Institute of Peace and Conflict Resolution. So I'm also a student like you. So I also take classes. And so the worst thing that can happen to you is not to study. Every opportunity you have, please go to class. Get something. Invest in yourself. Keep um, migrating upward so that your value keeps increasing. As the society keeps increasing, you too keep increasing in line with society. Thank you and God bless you. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Very thank much. You. Thank, you. thank you. Now we are going to move on to the next speaker. Uh, you have to have uh, just um, 10 minutes or 15 minutes to talk to us about medical coding. We've done everything about medical coding already in the class. So he's going to talk to us about medical coding. Then uh, just have some few minutes to ask questions. Over to you, uh, Mr. Peter Brindham. Over to you, please unmute yourself, please. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Yes, I am. Good evening. Thank you. I'm very grateful for this opportunity to be part of this lecture. Yeah. I am Peter Rinda, a registered nurse by profession, and a mental health nurse specialist. I'm a lecturer with FCT College of Nursing. I'm excited to present on this topic, medical coding. As I'm just giving just 15 minutes, I'll be brief. <laughs> uh, medical coding is a process where when a trained medical personnel or specialist turns medical diagnosis, procedure services into equipment information in a standardized alpha numerical code that is applied to the patients for the purpose of billing. So medical uh, coding majorly is a process which is useful in translating medical diagnosis and procedures and also services that is rendered into a universal alphanumeric code. What I mean by alphanumeric codes here, I'm talking of alphabets and numeric codes that is internationally accepted by all, uh, I mean, uh, organizations for billing and reimbursement. Um, this is coming from American Academic of Professional Coders. Now, where can actually one apply the knowledge of uh, medical coding? We make use of medical coding in National Health Insurance Scheme for people that are working in the National Health Insurance Scheme. The, in the hospital, when a doctor or a nurse generates or perform any services on the patient, we generate codes. You enter, in, you enter the court into your system and you send to your national health insurance or HMOs, uh, health management organizations or officers, and then they will now send you back a message that will now help you be able to give the necessary uh, services and the billing. So we we have several types of medical coding. We have international classification of disease, 10 revision, which is uh, used for diagnosis coding. We have current procedural terminology, CPT, which is developed by American Medical Association, which describes medical, surgical, and diagnostic services. When you look at it, when you go to the hospital, those of you that are civil servants or you have had parents that are uh, using NHIS, you discover that for you, 
if you go to a hospital that a case that this surgery, they will tell you that yes, this one is under NHIS. This procedure, this test is not captured. This one is captured. What they simply use is they use medical coding. Then we have healthcare common procedure coding system, HCPCS, which does which which covers uh, supplies, equipments, and services not included in the current procedural uh, terminologies. And then we also have a uh, hierarchical condition category, which use Medicare Advantage payment models. Now we have systematized nomenclature of medicine, which is a uh, Sinomet City, which is a comprehensive clinical terminology used for capturing and sharing health information across specialties and health settings. Now, where can I, where is the importance of uh, this uh, medical coding? What is the relevance of it? It's actually helping accuracy in billing. It helps you to be able to bill your patient properly so you don't underbill, you don't overbill. It facilitates reimbursement. So it helps correct, code, correct coding ensures that providers are paid promptly for their services. And the next one is for data analysis. Importance of medical coding is for data analysis. So coded medical data is used for statistical analysis and for research purposes. And then uh, for quality reporting, you want to report back to your service providers, you want to report to government, you want to report to NHIS. It helps for uh, quality reporting and for prompt dictation and prevention. We discovered that uh, there was a time I had a patient, I took my patient to the hospital, and actually I know a staff within the facility, but I said, there's nothing we can do to help you in this case, because everything is computerized. So we cannot help you. Everything, we enter a court, the court now go to a central system, and then the billing officers will deal it based on the court, and the court now tells you what actually the services that was rendered. And so there was nothing that could do. So it has to detect fraud. And it helps you in regulatory compliance. Proper coding ensures compliance with this regulation, avoiding penalties and legal issues. And then it also helps to streamline uh, workflow. It enables efficient record keeping. It simplifies claim submissions and support. And so the next and the last importance is standardization. It helps to promote consistency and interoperability across healthcare system, enhances communication and data exchange. Now, for somebody who is not a medical personnel, who is not a nurse, who is not a doctor, who is not a pharmacist, who is not a health personnel, how can I get trained as a medical coder? Those who uh, impute medical coding are called medical coders. How can I get trained as a medical coder? You can get trained as a medical coder in institutions. Okay, for instance, like uh, Nigeria or any country you are, we have uh, health management information system where you can get them in schools of health, colleges of health. You can also get it in the, the universities. Some universities have, uh, I mean, the health information management system where they run a diploma, they run the postgraduate, they run masters, even PhD in this program. So if you are not a medically inclined personnel and you want to be trained in this, I advise you can go and take a postgraduate diploma. You can take a diploma in health management information system or health informatics, and then you get it. You can also get it through online uh, programs like the way we're doing now, and then you are certificated and the license to practice as a medical coder. You can also get it through some local provisions in the hospital. Most hospitals now in Nigeria are using medical coding system. So everything is on the uh, coding. So like um, health information records. So you can go to them, they can train you locally, and then you can be certificated. And we call, you can also get it through uh, the uh, professional organizations. When you, you do, uh, take, for instance, you take a course, then they will train you and then give you an opportunity to do internship in uh, medical coding, where after you have been and tested, certified, you will be licensed to practice as a medical coder. And I tell you, it offers you very great opportunity to work in the hospital, to work in the HMOs, health management organizations, 
also help you to work with national health insurance scheme it betters the opportunity to work even in the hospital as a in the health uh, uh, manage information management system or records unit so it, it is very very important even as a health personnel that you are working even in your unit as a doctor as a nurse as a pharmacist as a lab scientist whichever cadre you are you need health management information in fact medical informatics of Okay, um, I want to believe we've not lost um, him. You can be any. I hear you. Hello, are we together? Hello? You can go ahead now. Now I can hear you. Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Hello? Just go ahead, I can hear you. Hello? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you can unmute yourself now. Please okay. unmute, your, unmute yourself, okay. Okay. Yeah. So in conclusion, medical coding is a vital process in healthcare, ensuring accurate documentation for billing and reimbursement. So it plays a crucial role in maintaining the integrity of medical records and facilitating communication between healthcare providers, insurers, and regulatory bodies, ultimately contributing to efficient healthcare delivery and financial management within the industry. So in summary, uh, medical coding is just about when a doctor sees a patient, after taking the diagnosis and recording the information, the doctor now uh, translate the information in the computer and send the information with appropriate cuts to health insurance, uh, insurance company. And then they will now send a cut that will now tell you, OK, this one is captured in our health insurance. This procedure is captured. This procedure is not captured. And the services that is to be paid. So this is just done to help healthcare providers and the insurers to be able to reimburse the service providers appropriately without incurring any loss. And so I, I believe the brief and short period I have for this uh, presentation, I believe you'll have me. So just as I said before, I don't know if you got it right. I said, whatever profession you are, you don't need to be a nurse or a pharmacist, or a doctor. You can just get it. You can get yourself trained. You're a graduate. Go to any uh, health training from a school, the university, the run uh, postgraduate diploma in health information management. Health information management. You go to colleges of health, the run a diploma program in health information management in those uh, uh, schools. Or uh, health, man I mean health, record well health informatics or oh, some of these programs are run in diploma some are run in postgraduate some are run in degree program where you obtain training and you can locally obtain training online through professional bodies in the hospitals and get certified and the license to practice and i tell you it's very lucrative hospitals now are migrating to uh, health information record and you need medical coding to be uh, relevant. Any question? Okay. Uh, thank Hello. you so much. Thank you, Mr. Are Peter. We, uh, we, we so much appreciate your time. We are going to take some questions. We are not going to waste more time. But uh, he has said it all. Stop complaining that there are no jobs. Stop complaining that um, things are difficult. Nigeria is this. Africa is this. The issue is that are you employable? So, now we are talking about being employable. We are Laplace Metaverse is opening up huge opportunities for people to veer into from their traditional 
background, educational background, and start having opportunities to get jobs in various areas. Like I just told you, if medical, if you are not a medical doctor, a nurse, or anybody, you can go into medical coding. Just get this certificate, and we will be sending you information. Please, we'll be dealing with those people that have gotten certificate. We will believe those ones need guidance and support. Those are the people who will be paying attention to. We sending you information on how to progress on this course, on this line of profession, where to do trainings, where to be internship, where to get opportunities. We'll be sending you all this information. So please, uh, just know that we are standing right side by side with you, and we are not going to leave you anytime soon. We'll make sure you succeed in whatever you're doing. Okay, we are going to just take um, some few questions, then we'll call it a day, so that we can move ahead to go and start getting our certificates. For those of you that have done the test, and um, that's all. Okay, um, Dr. Odo again. Just, please, just 10 seconds for your question. And I hope Mr. Peter will also use 10 or 20 seconds to respond to you. All right. Good evening, Doctor. Good evening. Good evening, our facilitator. Yeah. My name is Odo Joseph Obiora. My question goes like this. As an art student, who did not undergo science courses eligible to run this course at diploma level? Okay, over to you, Mr. Peter. Yes, just as I said before, you don't need medical knowledge to be a medical coder. Medical coding is just about using alpha numeric values. You just need uh, a little or no knowledge about medicine. But what you need now is the training. It depends on the certificate you have. As an art student, you can just walk to any training institution, like in the university where I graduated, graduated from University of Jos. They have a health information management system, a road diploma program, which is irrespective of your profession. You can go there. It's just a computer-based uh, knowledge that they give you course. They give you values and attach it with alphabet, and they just train you on how to impute this data, link it up to other organizations, and that's all. You don't need the knowledge of sciences, so you can be trained. You can be trained locally, you can be trained by uh, universities, you can be trained by colleges of health, colleges of uh, science, technology, so where these programs are run. And there are medical coders, there are medical coders associations which you can also go and uh, uh, get involved, uh, register with them, and they can train you and certify you. All you need is the certificate and the ability to perform on the job. So you don't need uh, medical, you don't need to be a science student to be a medical coder. Okay. I don't know if you heard me. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Peter. I think one of the, I think maybe probably one other reason some of them are asking, they want to ask, this very training they've had and the certificate they're going to get, is it going to be useful to them? Yes, the certificate is going to be useful to them because if you are applying with NHIS, NHIS does not only employ those who are medical experts, they employ people that cut across every discipline. And they will ask you, do you have knowledge on medical coding? Do you have knowledge on health management informatics or health management system? So they will ask, do you have any training on it? They will ask, do you have training in computer or data analysis? And you say, yes, they don't want you to show an evidence of the certificate. And then if you show the certificate, they will test you on the practical aspect. If you can perform, I tell you, you will get the job. I mean, you will get the job with ease, Thank you. without any- Thank you, problems. Mr. Peter. And like I kept saying here in, what we still don't understand in this part of the world is that the world has moved on. Nobody cares where you get your certificate from. What they care about is that you have the certificate, fine. Can you defend it? So who cares? I employ, I have staff I employ. I don't care where they get their certificate from. Once you, in fact, I don't even bother to see your certificate. Once I say, you can do this, okay, sit down, do it. And once you can do it, that's all, you start working. Everybody wants results. But of course, that same staff, if I'm going to give the staff an employment letter, I need to have something in the person's file. If the person is going to be on um, 
um, any other program for documentation purposes, I need a person's certificate to prove that this person actually did this training. Sometimes you have regulatory authorities coming around to say, you have this person working for you in this area. Has the person undergone any form of training? You say, yes, you bring their certificate. So that those are the things where you need to have a certificate. Otherwise, you might spend a long time telling people you are qualified. How do you prove you are qualified? Yes. Okay. Um, Okafor for Prince, what's your question, please? Just 10 seconds. And I hope Mr. Peter will also respond in just 10, 10 seconds. Okafor oh, yes. for Peter, you have 10 seconds. Okay. Good evening, doctor. Good evening, all the facilit facilitators. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. my, question, my question is, um, I want to, I have already done the test. I enjoyed the course. And um, I am also happy that um, your explanation about um, the course itself was still the same thing that we learned in the class, which means there is um, concurrence in um, the whole study. I'm happy. Thank you for the knowledge. What my question is, um, now that I've gotten this knowledge and um, I will soon be making my payment to get my certificate, um, Please, how do I progress? What we did is level two. Do I need level three or I can run with what I have? And then I, I'm, I'm trying, I'm working on leaving the country. Where and where can I walk if I get over to that side? This is my question. Okay. That's an excellent uh, question. Okay. Can I respond? Okay, just a minute, Mr. Uh, time. Okay, okay. Just a minute, Mr. Peter. Um, Mr. Okafo, first of all, uh, yeah. you can join um, ASHP, African Society for Healthcare Professionals, and then we intend to okay. commence very soon robust further training, bringing facilitators, experts like Mr. Peter that will spend a week, two weeks, three weeks with you uh, to uh, further improve on your skill and knowledge on a particular area. And um, like I said earlier on, we don't just have our students and abandon them. And that's why we also have um, uh, our alumni group on Telegram where you can join to get regular updates. All the associations like the one I just mentioned, uh, they also have a Telegram group where you have, uh, where you can join and have regular updates. You have a letter, a badge, a digital badge, a letter from the association, and even a certificate of membership. And you follow up and progress on various healthcare areas. So you don't have any fear. As for, then you can work abroad. I wouldn't want to say much about that. But I can also say that we have lots of our students working abroad. I don't know where they work. Uh, we, I don't, we are not involved in procuring jobs for people abroad. But based on their personal efforts, their skill, their knowledge, and I think to a large extent, the certificate they've gotten, most of them are working abroad. How many are working abroad? I don't know. So like I keep saying, before you start thinking of going abroad to work, please ensure you, you improve on your skill and knowledge. This certificate gives you an opportunity to move to the next level, which you don't have a problem about. You are going to get information about it. Over to you, Mr. Ring and Peter. Thank you. I am grateful. This question is a very good one. Yeah. Time was on my side. I would have talked of uh, medical coding in USA, medical coding in Canada, medical coding in UK, and the medical coding in the developing nations, and Nigeria is one of it. I would advise you, you are not relocating soon to abroad. I would advise you add more knowledge, move to the next level. But if you are relocating soon, when you get to abroad, there are organizations like uh, international uh, disease classification, I mean, international classification of disease and current procedural terminology. These are organizations that when you go there, in abroad, they don't only value certificate, but they value what you can use the certificate to do. So people have no link, theoretical certificate. They have the certificate, but they cannot do the work. So if before you travel, get yourself trained, get to the next level, maybe, uh, level two, three, or upgrade yourself more and get more practical knowledge on how these things are done. You have a touch with how medical coding is done. 
practically do an internship, then you can be certified. I assure you, the travel you will enjoy and you will tell more stories to those who are in Nigeria to join you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peter. You, are Thank you. Oh, you, you want to say something? No, I'm okay. Okay. Um, um, okay. Mr. Okafo want to believe that um, you, you are okay with this and um, you done enough, you've gotten enough information to proceed. Yeah. So please um, just understand that medical coding has different levels. So when you start talking about women and not women or whatever, you don't, you don't explain when you're going to do a PhD or a master's or whatever in medical coding. Of course, you, you should understand that there are different levels. But what we are saying here is that at this entry point, you to even get a job at a particular level of knowledge. This an expert in the field has spoken to you. I'm not an expert on medical coding. You just spoke with a nurse, or you just listened to a nurse that is an expert in that field talking to you live and direct. It's now up to you to take up the challenge, take up the opportunity, and ensure that you become happy in whatever you want to become later. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to pick um, just one more question from Mubarak, Halidu, and it will be all over for the day. Um, good evening, Mr. Facilitator. Yes, thank you. Uh, what I want to say is more of a request, not a question, I guess. Uh, okay. Please, uh, for people like me, I know there are other people that are having the same problem like mine. I... I have a certificate with the plat in uh, HR already, and I've paid for uh, this um, data processing and uh, this um, other one we did, we talked about here. There are people that are having issues on how to further what they are studying and it's very very hard sometimes to get someone that would like be a guide or should i say maybe a mentor that will train you on whatever field you want to master and okay you know make a career out of okay so seriously we'll be very happy if you would shed more light on that okay because, um, yeah, thank you yeah. very much, um, Mubarak. Uh, if you notice, if you, since you've taken courses with us, if you notice, uh, your certificate comes with some organizations and links. Yes, those organizations and links are meant to give you an opportunity to belong to an organization where you can have discussions. From July, most of these organizations will become very, 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 very active. They will give you a guide. They will give you support. They will answer questions. You will be with people that belong to the same group with you. Professional backgrounds will be into cognizance, and um, you will be able to have a guide to your professional growth. And uh, we intend to be bringing experts like Mr. Peter, uh, Professor Diorov, and um, Mr. Um, Donald and so many other facilitators we've been having. We intend to bring a lot of them in a common group over a span of one week to talk about various areas, where, how you can progress, where you can get to, associations you can join if you don't have such associations or we don't have affiliations with any of them. If I, it will just be an opportunity for you to know that you now have fresh air. You are now going to be fresh air as far as you want to, as far as your Professional progression is consigned. Now I understand that lots of people are stagnated. You don't even know what next to do. But first and foremost, you now know that you can become a medical coder, whether you studied English, geography, or whatever. Then the next thing is that how do you progress to become a medical coder at different levels? That is what we are also going to tackle. So don't worry, like we said, we are not going to abandon you. Do your part, join the Telegram group. It's going to come with your certificate link. 
and everybody's going to get that link. Just join. We are not posting courses there. We are not advertising courses there. The opportunities that comes up will be there. You can ask questions and things like that. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bubara. Hope I've answered your question. Thank you, Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. All right. Do I need to respond again? Um, okay, you can go. You can just ask. All right. Okay, my battery is getting weak, and uh, okay. any moment from now, we should. So let me just respond. Okay. Uh, Mr. Mubara, just like I explained before, you have received the first training. You can continue and receive the second get on. If you need more light, I can always be contacted, and I can link you up to other schools, just as I tell you. I, I said before, I'm a lecturer. So I lecture not only in one school, I lecture in three schools. So. I can get you link up with a place that I'm sure they do medical coding, health information management system, where they do health informatics, where they do health records. And these are areas where you can get registered and be a professional coder in Nigeria. And so I am telling you a first-hand information. Hospitals now have become very, very, very uh, computerized. You cannot do anything in the hospital now without getting uh, a medical code. You can be at home and then you could, in some advanced countries of the world, you've gotten a code. You can be at home on your laptop or your handset. You can just impute your code and get access to your doctor. So these are advanced technologies. So that we are coming up in Nigeria gradually, but most of our teaching hospitals have started using medical coding and shifting gradually to the uh, hell, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, uh, secondary uh, uh, teaching, I mean, secondary hospital facilities, like, uh, I mean, the, the hospitals in the state, in the local government headquarters, where you see some uh, local government, uh, I mean, hospital management facilities, where you have some computers and little of those facilities. But in the tertiary teaching hospital, I mean, tertiary facilities, where like teaching hospitals, where we have computer network. I tell you, medical coding is already there. So you, you just need to advance. Just take a step, get yourself registered as a, pro I mean, as a professional coder. You have gotten the life certificate. It's a certificate that gives you an opportunity to get registered. So we'll gradually we'll link you up. Uh, the facilitators are there. The organization is there. They will link you up. And I tell you, you will never regret it. OK, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, uh, Yes, thank you, yes. Mr. Peter. We would like to um, call it a day because your, your battery is going down, so we don't uh, lose you. Uh, thank you. We appreciate your time. Uh, any other question can be sent thank to you, sir. the classroom on WhatsApp. And uh, we hope to keep in touch with you, Mr. Peter, for a bigger, right. uh, uh, broader discussion on medical coding. God bless you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've come to thank the you. end of this program. Uh, we're calling it a day. I appreciate your time, and I want to believe that we are all happy. Thank you, and see you in the WhatsApp class. Go make your payment for your certificate, and um, get ready to become a medical coder. Get ready to go into social work, and get ready to become a data analyst. And above all, get ready to live the kind of life you want to live, doing what you feel like doing, and being happy doing what you like doing. God bless you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Yeah, good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.